Hello! Today we're diving into the compressor and how it works, so let's get into it. The compressor is here to smooth out your chaos and give your mix some more balance. Today we're going deep, like overly sound engineer caffeinated deep into the compressor. So let's do it. Well, what is compression? Compression is like a bouncer for your audio. The peaks are too loud, take them down a bit. Quiet parts, it knocks them up. Basically, it controls the dynamic range of your sound and makes it more consistent. But let's look at a visual of how the compressor works. First up, threshold. This is the level where the compressor starts working. Anything louder than the level you just selected will get smacked down. Think of it as like a ceiling and if anything touches the ceiling, it gets smacked down a bit. If you set it too low, even whispers will get dimmed down. And if you set it too high, you might as well not even bother. The trick is finding that sweet spot where the music is still lively but it's controlled. Now, on to ratio. Think of this as how strict your compressor is when it kicks in. A low ratio of like 2 to 1 is like a reminder, please dim it down a bit. If it's 10 to 1, it's more like the party is over. The higher the ratio, the more aggressive the compressor is. Next up, we got the attack and the release. These are like your compressor's reaction time, basically. Attack is how fast your compression kicks in. If you set a fast attack, it will do it instantly, but if you set it too fast, it will just kill the sound because it's just too much. Release, on the other hand, is how quickly the compressor lets go of the sound again. Too fast and you'll hear the music bounce up again really fast and it'll sound unnatural. Too slow and the compressor is holding on for dear life as of when it should let go. Makeup gain. After you squish your audio down, it's going to sound quieter. That's where the makeup gain comes in. This is just turning up the volume of the whole sample after the compression, but you shouldn't do it too much or you just end up in the same place, but this time everything's loud. Okay, we're back in Ableton, and this is Ableton's compressor. It isn't a one-trick pony, there's stuff to it. Let's check it out. Peak mode. It's like the paranoid friend that reacts to everything. It reacts to the loudest part of your sound and instantly tries to crush it. Perfect those, oh my god, what was that moments in your audio. RMS mode. This one's a little bit more laid back option. It measures the average loudness of the whole sample and if something gets a little bit out of hand, it kicks in. It's great for adding some smooth control without going overboard. Now, let's talk expand mode. This is a bit different because honestly, it's just the exact opposite of normal compression. Instead of bringing the loud parts down, this actually brings up the loud parts and brings down the low parts. It's like giving your audio a push on either end to even more pronounce the dynamic range. It's maybe not the average everyday tool, but if you want to highlight the contrast between the highs and the lows, it's perfect. Now going into the Ableton territory, Ableton has some different compressors you can work with, and let's take a look at them. The standard compressor. This is your basic utility tool for compression. It works on a single band and it focuses on controlling the whole signal. Think of it as like a general purpose tool for taming your peaks and getting a more balanced mix. Now the glue compressor. This is all about smoothness. It's modeled after vintage analog compression, which makes it perfect for like bus compression. Which just means that if you have like a bunch of uh, different instruments and you want them all to be glued together to sound more cohesive, this is your tool. Now there's the multi-band compression. This is like the control freak of the group. This lets you split your signal into three different frequencies. There's the low, the middle, and the high. And now we can compress each one separately. It's perfect for those moments where your bass needs in compression, but not your mids and your highs. It's super powerful for mastering, and it's like a surgical compressor. So it's a compressor on steroids, really. So there you have it, the compressor in all of its glory. If your track is getting too rowdy, this guy is here to lay down the law. But don't forget, it's all about balance. If you've used too much, you'll squish the life out of your mix. If you learned something, hit that like button, subscribe because I'm desperate, and let me know which effect you want me to cover next time before I compress the enthusiasm for my life. See you there.